Good morning. Welcome to part five of our discussion on suffering. And just a little quick recap. We have discovered from John chapter 16, verse 33, that Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. So we have learned that we will have suffering, and we've uh, discussed some reasons why. One of them being we live in a fallen, broken world. Also, we suffer because we sin. We suffer because we have an enemy. And we suffer because Jesus suffered. Because by being one of his disciples, and Jesus said, the world hates me. So don't be surprised if the world hates you. So those are some reasons uh, that we have found that we suffer why, and why we suffer. But we've also began talking about how God can, through that suffering, make something new. And last time we talked about how God draws us closer to him and that um, he, he creates a better relationship between us where we can... Uh, rely on him better so our relationship grows stronger and we also talked about how he changes us through our suffering how he um, he cares so much more about our character than our comfort and he grows our faith through suffering today we're going to talk about how God creates something new through us through our suffering by preparing us for something that he wants us to do. And I may not know what he's preparing me for until the work he's doing in me becomes the work that he's doing through me. So sometimes that suffering that I'm going through, I may not know it at the time until later when I I see that he's called me to do something and that through that past suffering, I'm better equipped for it. An example of that would be Moses. You know, Moses, as when he was uh, just a tiny baby, he was saved from death and placed in a spot of privilege in Pharaoh's palace. Now, because he was there, he became educated. He could read and he could write. And all of the, that being there and learning, getting, gaining that education helped prepare him because someday he was going to write the first five books of the Bible. And, and perhaps he wrote Job as well. So that was a, uh, he was being prepared through that to do something later on. Then when he was forced to flee Egypt and he lived in Midian, he was learning how to live this nomadic lifestyle in the wilderness. That definitely comes in handy later. God was preparing him all along the way. So let's look at the Israelite people themselves. So they were brought to Egypt because there was this famine. And when they first came to Egypt, they were this large family. And at the time, they were saved from starvation. Remember, we talked about Joseph early on in this series of how God prepared him through the time that he spent in Egypt so that one day he would lead this nation, uh, Egypt, out of being be able to survive the famine and for his family to be able to survive. So they were this large group of, of uh, large family. They grow as they're living in Egypt to become this large people. And the Egyptians get afraid of them and decide that they had better enslave them or be overtaken by them. And they were slaves for 400 years before God used Moses, whom he had been preparing during that whole time, not the 400 years, but during that time, getting him ready to lead his people um, out of Egypt and into the promised land. So, I mean, why? Why take the, Egypt, uh, take the Israelites into Egypt? Why didn't he just 
why couldn't they just stay there and not have become enslaved? Why didn't they just become a people there? Well, probably they would have just intermarried with the Egyptians. They would have lost their identity. They would have lost their focus on who they were as that covenant family. Um, and God could have just taken them straight out of Egypt uh, early on before they were became enslaved and taken them into the promised land. But he didn't do that because if they had done that, gone straight there, they wouldn't have, they would have also intermarried, which we see they end up doing anyway after a fashion, but they would have lost that identity and they would have not ever become this nation that they needed to become. Um, so when they get to the wilderness and they spend 40 years in the wilderness just wandering around, that was not a time that was wasted at all. This time prepared them. They needed to stop thinking like slaves to start with. And they needed to become a nation. They needed to learn God's ways. They needed to live, learn how to live together as a nation so that when God brought them into the promised land, they would be prepared. So he took this, what was a family, created them into a people. Then they became a nation and then they became a priesthood. And all of those steps along the way were needed to prepare them for what they were going to need to do when they got into the promised land. So you don't know what God is preparing you for. The things that you're going through right now, maybe like Moses, I don't know, maybe you will be called to lead a nation, but maybe you'll just be called to lead your family. Or maybe you'll be called to lead a, a small group of people in as a Sunday school class or a Bible teacher or just being a good citizen. Whatever God is calling you to do, he's preparing you to do. And sometimes it's the suffering that we go through that prepares us for that. And we don't know it until we start doing it. So whenever you're in suffering, remember, God can use that to prepare you for something that he's going to call you to later. We'll be back next time and continue to see how God can use your suffering to make something new. Thanks. Y'all have a great week.